Hey guys, King of Charmanders here. Today I bring to you a video on the best Devil Joe builds for all weapon types. This is a complete guide for all Devil Joe builds. I'll provide multiple build options for each weapon based off accessibility and play styles. So if you like offensive guard, guess what? We got offensive guard here. If you like quick work, we got quick work here. All builds assume grade 10, level 5 out of 5 max weapons. So this is going to assume that you're going to upgrade this thing to full power and thanks to MHN.Quest Sammy for the awesome resource. This uses the practicality assessment to provide builds based off of theoretical damage. Obviously, every battle isn't going to go the way you want it to or perfectly. But if we got some numbers, if we got something that's going to pile all the data, it's a really good thing to go off of. And it's going to be a long one, so let's just jump right into it. First, we have the offensive 5 build with the Devil Joe Sword and Shield. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does a damage of 3,886. And versus non-Dragon Weak Monsters, it does a damage of 2,294. It maxes out Offensive Guard at level 5. And Weakness Exploit 2 and Critical Eye 2 gives you a total of 40% crit, offsetting the negative 30% affinity. It also has Lock On and Heroic gives you a boost if you go 20 below 29% HP. To use this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8, the Bareth Mail at grade 6, Bamboro Vambraces at grade 6, Pink Brathian Coil at grade 6, and the Black Diablo Greaves at grade 6. Next up for the Devil Joe Sword and Shield, we have the Critical I-4, Weakness Exploit 2, Burst 2, Crit Build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 3,599 damage. Versus non-Dragon Weak Monsters, you have 1,883 damage. This uses Burst Level 2 for extra damage. Wex 2 and Critical I-4 gives you a total of 55% crit, offsetting the negative 30% affinity. And you have Latent Power along with it, where Latent Power Level 2 activates around 36 to 48 seconds, and slower weapons have bigger motion values. So you still have that offsetting crit, and then you have Latent Power where you need to kick in. To use this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the, De Devil the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, the Rothian Vambraces at Grade 6, Pink Rothian Coil at Grade 6, and the Kulu Yaku Greaves at Grade 6. And last but not least, for the Devil Joe Sword and Shield, we have the Dragon Attack 4 build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 3,626 damage. Versus non Dragon Weak Monsters, we got 1,671 damage. This gives Dragon Attack level 4, and Weakness Exploit 2 gives you a total of 25% crit. This doesn't offset the negative affinity, which is negative 30% affinity, till Latent Power level 2 kicks in. So until you got 36 to 48 seconds in, it's not going to kick in and give you a positive affinity, so just keep that in mind. It also has a lot of extra skills, but the build assumes that your HP is full for peak performance level 2 to stay active. I would say that's the only thing bad about the Dragon Attack level 4 builds for all of them you see here is that they all hold peak performance. So that adds in and that's why it does more damage than some of the other builds you see for the variations as far as weapon types go. To use this build, you need the Kuro Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at grade 6, Devil Joe Vambraces at grade 6, Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Pink Rothian Greaves at Grade 6. On to the next weapon type, and we have the Devil Joe Great Sword. This is the Critical I-4, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Boost Level 2, Crit Build. So versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this will do 3,630 damage. Versus non-Dragon Weak, you have 1,822 damage. This has Critical Boost Level 2 for a 135% Crit Damage Multiplier. Weakness Exploit 2 and Critical I-4 gives you a total of 55% Crit, offsetting the negative 30% Affinity. And Latent Power 2 Level 2 activates around 36 to 48 seconds, as slower weapons have bigger motion values, so that's perfect for the Great Sword. Which means you will be able to add on Latent Power's Affinity to that offsetting the negative 30% Affinity after a certain amount of time. To use this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Azerathalos Fan Braces at Grade 6, Pink Rothian Coil at Grade 6, and the Kulu Yaku Greaves at Grade 6. And last but not least, for the Devil Joe Greatsword, we have the Dragon Attack 4 build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, we have 3,687 damage. Versus non-Dragon Weak Monsters, you have 1,702 damage. So this does less versus non-Dragon Weak, and it does more against Dragon Week. This gives peak performance level 2, however, this assumes your HP is full for it to work. 
Weakness Exploit 2 gives you a total of 25% crit, however this doesn't offset the negative 30% affinity till Latent Power 2 kicks in, as Latent Power Level 2 activates around 36 to 48 seconds. Again, this is perfect for the Greatsword because slower weapons have bigger motion values. To use this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Devil Joe Van Braces at Grade 6, the Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Pink Rotting Greaves at Grade 6. On to the next weapon type, and we have the Devil Joe Hammer. First, we have the Dragon Attack 4 build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 3,626 damage. Versus non Dragon Weak Monsters, you do 1,671. This gives Dragon Attack level 4, and Weakness Exploit 2 gives you a total of 25% crit. Which means this doesn't offset the negative 30% crit until Latent Power level 2 kicks in. Latent Power level 2 activates around 36 to 48 seconds, and slower weapons have bigger motion values. Which is perfect for the hammer, because the hammer is pretty dang slow. Not super slow, but it's slow. It also has a lot of extra skills in peak performance level 2 and special boost level 2, so you got a lot of extras in here to do some extra damage. To use this build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Devil Joe Van Braces at Grade 6, Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Pink Rotting Greaves at Grade 6. Next up for the hammer, we have Critical I-4, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Boost Level 2 Crit Build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 3,563 damage. Versus Non-Dragon Weak, you have 1,788 damage. This has crit boost level 2 for 135% crit damage multiplier, and with Wex 2 and Critical I-4, it gives you a total of 55% crit, which offsets the negative 30% affinity. Latent Power level 2 activates around 36 to 48 seconds, slower weapons have bigger motion values, so again, it's perfect for the hammer. To use this build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Azerathalos Van Braces at Grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at Grade 6, and Kuluyaku Greaves at Grade 6. And last but not least for the Devil Joe Hammer, we have the Slugger 3 Crit build. So this is a custom build that uses Slugger 3 for more stun power. Honestly, this is probably best if you're using it as a supporting build, and it has Critical Boost Level 2 for 135% Crit Damage Multiplier. It also has Weakness Exploit Level 2 and Critical Eye Level 2, which gives you a total of 40% Crit, offsetting the negative 30% affinity, at least until latent power activates around 36 to 48 seconds, which gives you more affinity to offset that negative affinity. And slower weapons have bigger motion values again, so perfect for the hammer. To use this build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Azerathalos Fan Braces at Grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at Grade 6, and the Diablos Greaves at Grade 6. Moving on to the next weapon type, we have the Devil Joe Longsword, and this is a Dragon Attack 4 build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, you do 3,650 damage. Versus Non-Dragon Weak, you have 1,682 damage. This gives Dragon Attack level 4, and Weakness Exploit 2 gives you a total of 25% crit. This doesn't offset the negative 30% affinity till Latent Power level 2 kicks in. And Latent Power level 2 activates around 36 to 48 seconds, where slower weapons have bigger motion values. Longsword isn't too slow, but you're still going to benefit from Latent Power level 2 at one point. To use this build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Devil Joe Van Braces at Grade 6, Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Pink Rothing Greaves at Grade 6. And now, in my opinion, we have the best build for the Devil Joe Longsword, which is the Quick Work 3 Burst 2 Crit build. Versus Dragon Weak Monster, this does 3,660 damage. Versus Non Dragon Weak Monsters, this will do 1,907 damage. It has Quick Work Level 3 to maximize EI Spirit slash Speed, and it's absolutely incredible. Along with that, it has Weakness Exploit 2 and Critical I-4, which gives you a total of 55% crit, offsetting the negative 30% affinity. And it also has Burst Level 2 for extra damage as well as Lock On. It's pretty cool that this build is one of, is essentially, it is, I think it, it was the top when I was looking it together. And a Quick Work Level 3 build is possible thanks to just having the Odegaran Helmet and of course the Devil Joe Longsword. 
To use this build, you must have the Odogarin Helmet at Grade 6, the Rathalos Mail at Grade 6, Rathian Van Braces at Grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at Grade 6, and the Kuluyaku Greaves at Grade 6. On to the next weapon type with the Devil Joe Light Bow Gun. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to call this the Dragon Destroyer Recoil Down 3 and Reload Speed 3 build. Because versus Dragon Weak Monsters, you do 5,298 damage. Versus non Dragon Weak, you do 2,683 damage. This does an insane amount of theoretical damage versus Dragon Weak Monsters. I didn't think of this at first, but when I put Reload Speed and Recoil Down after testing it for the first time myself, I'm holistically sold that this is entirely possible. Obviously, it's not going to be entirely to the T, but if you look at it, sitting there blasting away at Dragon Weak Monsters with Slicing Dragon Ammo and Sticky Dragon Ammo is absolutely insane. And this build does more damage than the Black Diablos bow, again, against Dragon Weak Monsters. So, definitely looking to test this out one day. I'm probably going to put all my Devil Joe resources into this, but I'm taking a lot of time on this just because for you Devil Joe bowgun users, oh my god, this is amazing. Weakness Exploit 2 and Critical Eye 2 gives you a total of 40% crit, offsetting the negative 30% affinity. Rising Tide Level 2 also increases attack and defense every 25 seconds. So you have 60 at 25 seconds and 120 at 50 seconds. To use this incredible build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, Paluma Mail at Grade 6, Legiana Van Braces at Grade 6, Coral Puke Puke Coil at Grade 6, and the Kuyaku Greaves at Grade 6. On to the next long range weapon and we have the Devil Joe Bow. With a Focus 5, Elemental 4, Peak Performance 4 build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 4,048 damage. Versus non Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 1,929. Now, the problem with this build, it relies on full HP to take full advantage of peak performance level 4. It also has Last Stand level 1 for extra defense. Honestly, although the Pink Rothian Bow does less damage, it's a lot better than investing a ton of Devil Joe resources into this bow. It's better to pass on a Devil Joe Bow. Yes, it does. If you look, put them side by side, it's 400 damage, but there's really nothing special about this bow. Seeing as Pink Rothian is a lot more accessible if you've been here since Pink Rothian's been out, because it's had like four events, Pink Rothian Bow is definitely a lot more resource restrictive than Devil Joe. I would definitely put my stuff into another one. And although peak performance level 2 is an A tier skill, the weapon itself, unfortunately, is definitely not in the S tier or A tier in general. So I would skip out on this. Don't build on this. But if you want to use the Devil Joe Bow for some reason, we have the Azerathlos Helmet at grade 6, the Pink Rothian Mail at grade 6, Devil Joe Van Braces at grade 6. Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Gyro Totus Greaves at Grade 6. Moving on, we have my personal favorite weapon type, which is the Devil Joe Dual Blades. Starting off with the Dragon Attack 4 build. Versus Dragon Weave Monsters, you do 3,785 damage. And versus non Dragon Weak Monsters, you have 1,822 damage. This gives Dragon Attack Level 4 and a lot of extra skills for more damage. Wex level 2 also gives you a total of 25% crit, and this doesn't unfortunately offset the negative 30% affinity until Latent Power level 2 kicks in. Latent Power level 2 activates around 38, 36 to 48 seconds, as slower weapons have bigger motion values. So it's probably not going to activate sooner for the dual blades because it's not slow at all, but still a super solid build with a lot of damage. For this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Devil Joe Van Braces at Grade 6, Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Pink Rothing Greaves at Grade 6. Next up for the Devil Joe Dual Blades, we have the Burst 5 Crit build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 3,763 damage. Versus Non-Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 2,112 damage. 
more so than the other one and burst 5 is really good at staying active as long as you do enough damage and maintain it which is perfect for dual blades. This maxes burst level 5 and does more damage versus non-dragon weak monsters again for barely any trade-off and it's a lot more accessible. You don't need 3 devil joe armor pieces to build this build versus the other one. Weakness Exploit 2 and Critical Eye 4 gives you a total of 55% affinity, which offsets the negative 30% affinity, and it has Lock On as an extra bonus. For this incredible build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Odo Garen Mail at Grade 6, Rothian Van Braces at Grade 6, Pink Rothian Coil at Grade 6, and the Zenogre Greaves at Grade 6. On to the next weapon type, and we have the Devil Joe Lance. First off, we have Offensive Guard 5 Crit Build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 3,922 damage. Versus non Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 2,315 damage. As it maxes out Offensive Guard at level 5, and Critical I 5 gives you a total of 40% crit, which offsets the negative 30% affinity guaranteed. So you have a 10% chance of critting since you offset the negative 30, which is awesome. However, this build assumes Heroics level 1 is active, so you still have a little more damage than I would say the other builds for the Lance, but again, this assumes that Heroics is active for this total damage. To use this build, you need the Kuliaku Helm at grade 4, the Odo Garen Mail at grade 6, Bambro Van Braces at grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at grade 6, and the Black Diablo Screeves at grade 6. Next up for the Devil Joe Lance, we have the Dragon Attack 4 build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, this does 3,831 damage. Versus non Dragon Weak Monsters, we have 1,876 damage. This gives Dragon Attack level 4 and a lot of extra skills for more damage. Weakness Exploit 2 gives you a total of 25% crit, and it doesn't offset the negative 30% affinity till Latent Power level 2 kicks in. And Latent Power level 2 activates around 36 to 48 seconds. Slower weapons have bigger motion values, so the Lance is slow. So yes, you're gonna have more motion values. However, for this build, you need to proc Offensive Guard, so just keep that in mind, and there's a lot of other extra skills that work around it. To use this build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Devil Joe Mail at Grade 6, Devil Joe Van Braces at Grade 6, Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Pink Rothian Greaves at Grade 6. And last but not least for the Devil Joe Lance, we have the Offensive Guard 5 Guard 3 build. This is a custom build that uses Guard 3 to reduce knockback, but has Offensive Guard 5 to still proc a 40% damage increase. For those of you that like using Counter Guard but don't want to take a ton of damage every time you do it, this build is for you. Weakness Exploit 2 gives you a total of 25% crit, so this unfortunately doesn't offset the negative 30% affinity. It has Defense Boost Level 1 and Heroics Level 1 for extra damage, and it also has Lock On thanks to the Coral Puke Puke Helmet. Speaking of that, to use this build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Barreth Mail at Grade 6, Barreth Fan Braces at Grade 6, Barreth Coil at Grade 4, and the Black Diablos Greaves at Grade 6. And finally, the newly released weapon, the Ace of the Vernal Invader, the Devil Joe Charge Blade. Starting off with the Dragon Attack 4 build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, you will do 3,690 damage. And versus Non Dragon Weak, you will have 1,700 damage. This gives Dragon Attack level 4 and a lot of extra skills for more damage. Also has Weakness Exploit 4, which gives you a total of 40% crit, which offsets the negative 30% affinity only for hitting weak spots, though. Lane Power level 1 activates around 36 to 48 seconds, as slower weapons have bigger motion values. Charge Blade is a slow weapon if you're using Axe Mode, so it's definitely going to benefit from Latent Power, which is its skill that is given to it by the Devil Joe Charge Blade. To use this build, you must have the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at Grade 8, the Rathlos Mail at Grade 6, Devil Joe Van Braces at Grade 6, Devil Joe Coil at Grade 6, and the Pink Rothian Greaves at Grade 6. Next up for the Devil Joe Charge Blade, we have the Quick Work 2 Crit build. Versus Dragwing Monsters, this does 3,641 damage. 
versus non-Dragon Weak monsters, we have 1,882 damage. This has Quick Work level 2 for an aggressive axe attack and Burst level 2 for extra damage. Critical I4 and Weakness Exploit 2 gives you a total of 55% crit, which offsets the negative 30% affinity. And you have Latent Power level 1, which activates around 36 to 48 seconds. Slower weapons have bigger motion values, which is perfect for the charge blade, especially going into axe mode. You'll be able to do very aggressive work with this build, and honestly, it's my personal favorite out of the rest of them, just because with quick work level 2, you can just smash axe to oblivion, and with bursts, you can get some consistent damage, and it also offsets the negative affinity, which is perfect. For this build, you need the Odo Garen Helmet at grade 6, Rathalos Mail at grade 6, Rathian Van Braces at grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at grade 6, and the Kuluyaku Greaves at grade 6. And if you like Offensive Guard with the Devil Joe Charge Blade, here's an Offensive Guard 5 crit build. Versus Dragon Weak Monsters, you get 3,892 damage. Versus Non-Dragon Weak, we have 2,257. This maxes out Offensive Guard level 5 and has Heroics level 1 for extra damage. Critical I4 and Weakness Exploit 2 also gives you a total of 55% crit, offsetting the negative 30% affinity. And you still have Latent Power level 1, which activates around 36 to 48 seconds, as slower weapons have bigger motion values again, so again, good for the charge blade. For this build, you need the Coral Puke Puke Helmet at grade 8, the Barith Mail at grade 6, Bambro Van Braces at grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at grade 6, and the Black Diablos Greaves at grade 6. And last but not least, if you want to invest into defense for the Devil Joe Charge Blade, we have a Guard 2 crit build. This is a custom blade that uses Guard 2 and Guard Points plus 1 to advance on monster attacks and go into Amped Elemental Discharges, which is AED. This has Critical I4 and Weakness Exploit 2, which gives you a total of 55% crit to offset the negative 30% affinity. And you even have Latent Power. Well, with Latent Power, at level 1, it activates around 36 to 48 seconds, and slower weapons have bigger motion values. The charge blade has slow motion values, as mentioned before, so it works perfectly with latent power. Again, this is a very defensive build, and it's only if you have guard points, etc., or if you want to take advantage of using guard points. Just keep in mind, it's not going to do as much damage as the other charge blade builds I've put in here. But if you like defense, this is the Radabon Helmet at grade 6. Rathalos Mail at grade 6, Rathian Van Braces at grade 6, Pink Rathian Coil at grade 6, and the Kuluyaku Greaves at grade 6. Alright, that was a lot of builds, so I'm going to keep this closer short. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what you want to build for Devil Joe's weapons. Everyone can have different build preferences, choose the one that works best for you. Damage wise, theoretically, yes, these are very high, however... I gave you multiple ones because if you don't like dragon attack, you can use crit. If you don't like crit, there's specific weapons like the charge blade, like longsword, that have things like quick work that you can really take advantage of and might work for you. For example, for bow, a lot of people like using crit and wex to offset Black Diablos' affinity. I actually like using burst 3 a little better just because it feels a lot more consistent because when you use the Black Diablos bow and you hit pierce off on nothing that's a weak spot, you're not going to be able to go into that positive affinity range. So for me, I just like burst 3 because it gives a lot more consistent damage because whether I hit the weak spot or not, I can still build on burst damage for burst 3. With that being said, please do me a huge favor. Like, subscribe, and comment for the YouTube algorithm. Go look on all your Devil Joe grinds and look forward to all those Devil Joe events coming in the future. And I will see y'all on the next video. Ciao!